So what what does the Drumlin stuff uh, suggest? Is that just connected with uh, the, the the flooding and how it came down? Okay, so Drumlins basically what you have when the glaciers come across the landscape, they basically pulverize the landscape, right. creating this this stuff that's called glacial till, right. which in the old days was called drift right. because it was associated with flowing water. Well. So you have glacial till, which is this ground up landscape. Um, it's, it's, you know, gravel and rocks and sand and silt. And it's just, a, might be organic material. It's all, all mingled together chaotically. There's no structure to it, um, which differentiate, differentiates it from water laid material, which will usually have a discernible structure. Right. Flow with different layering. density. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You, you, and, and, and that's how you differentiate between the two. But so basically what happens is, when you have water moving under the glacier, and this was back to John Shaw again, his idea is that these drumlin fields were um, produced by subglacial, huge subglacial beneath the glaciers, floods that were under pressure. They didn't have a free surface. So the hydraulic consequences were very different from a, a water mass flowing over the landscape that has a free surface so that the water is free to change its depth and, and, and so forth according to um, the topography. But when you have the subglacial floods, it's capped by an ice sheet. And would so that leave that, a different signature? It would leave a very different signature. What it does now is it takes that glacial till and shapes it into these aerodynamic forms. Ah. Um, mm. And I could actually... Uh, hopefully it won't glitch the thing. I can pull up. No, go ahead. Co pull up Google Earth here, and then I'm going to do a screen share. Sure. Um, Nerd. So basically, what we were, what the difference would be, like the I've seen like serration of mountains that was caused by glacial movement. And this would be a much more um, even fluid erosion caused by that, thanks to the fact that the water's moving right, and the water gives yes. a little bit. Yes. Okay. And, and, and so what it's doing is it's because it's moving under pressure now, um, it's shaping that glacial till in ways that, that the water uh, that's not moving under uh, other than its own pressure is able to do. And I'm going right. to pull up, I'll show you an example of a, of an amazing, uh, an amazing drumlin field. Uh, you guys ever been in Western New York? I have not. Okay, so I'm going to. Is Rochester, pull... Western New York? Yes, R Rochester is right there at the at the top end of a really impressive drumlin field, and let's see here. So I'm going to first of all, I'm going to pull out here. I'm, I've got Google Maps. Now I'm going to go to open this up and go to screen share, and hopefully this will work. Let me know when you see the maps. Yahtzee. Good. Okay. So we're looking at Lake Ontario and I don't have the, the, the bathymetric map of Lake Ontario, but over here in the Eastern end of Lake Ontario is a, a deep <coughs> circular basin. And then you look immediately South and you see the finger lakes. And what's interesting about the finger lakes is um, you've got, they're basically radial um, picture you hold your hand up in front of your face and spread your fingers right, right. and they're, they're they're kind of you would say that there's a radial distribution mm. if you look at the finger lakes and you follow the axes of these finger lakes what you'll see is they all converge on this deep basin that's on uh eastern ontario right now the north end of the finger lakes and i'm going to draw my cursor right across here you see the town of Geneva, Seneca Falls, Auburn. Mm -hmm. Okay, that represents the southern margin of the ice sheet right there. So the Finger Lakes were just outside the glacier. When you're north of there, you're under the ice, right? Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom in, and you could, you'll be able to see the, the Drumlin Fields. Let's go on in here. Hopefully we will get enough. Ah, here we go. Check. See, these are all. Can you see these? Yeah. Yeah, it's crazy. 
Yeah, it's crazy. They're like inverted boat hulls. They almost look like if you turned a canoe upside down. Right. And why is a boat hull shaped as it is? Because it's trying to minimize the frictional drag as the, the boat moves through the water. Well, what's happening here is the water is doing the same thing as it's moving through these fields of glacial till. It's shaping, when it comes to irregularities within the glacial till, what it does is tries to shape them to, into the form that will provide the least frictional resistance to the, to the movement of the water. And so this is an example of, a, of an extraordinary drumlin field. And you can really, as I'm scanning over here, you can see there's thousands of them. Wow. Seems pretty evident. Oh yeah, and and so is, and, is there a debate on this? What what's what caused them? Th yes, this is the debate. What caused the drumlins? And if you go through the drumlin literature, you're going to find that there's probably fifty different theories, um, all attempting to explain the existence of drumlins as a result of somehow direct glacial action. Mm. And it was John Shaw who came along in the '80s and and proposed this idea of subglacial floods and said, "Look for and." A lot of technical reasons we could get into, but it would probably take us far afield. That is the most likely explanation. For one thing, many of the drumlins have internal stratification, which again is is not consistent with simply uh, creation by direct glacial action. Because, like I said, the glaciers don't sort. Water will sort. Water mm -hmm. will create bedding. Water will create these shapes. And the thing about drumlins is. Blunt on the upstream end, tapered on the downstream end. Yeah, it's directional Again, this is for consistent. sure. Consistent. Um, yes, and so basically, the critics of Shaw, and and I'm showing you one drumlin field here, but there are massive drumlin fields. If I, I'm going to scan over here. I'm going to zoom out, and this is one I passed through earlier this year. If I go to southern Wisconsin here, let's see here if we can find that yeah here we go here we go we're we're now in in wisconsin there we go can you see the drumlins yeah. these elongated uh -huh. tapered hills and and if you look at them they're in a radiating pattern right, right? yeah and and they're emanating from see oshkosh uh lake winnebago here is a scour trough that was hollowed out by the sheer forces of moving water and you had water coming off the ice sheet diverging um, that came down, cut this pathway that is now Green Bay. And you see this, we're looking at a trough here that was created mm -hmm. catastrophically. Right. The water came down here. Once it, as it came down towards the edge of the glacier, then you had the drumlin field. And then as soon as the water comes free of the glacier, then the drumlin fields stop because now the water is not pressure under that tremendous pressure that shapes the glacial till. Now, the critics of John Shaw said that the drumlin fields are so vast that you can't provide an explanation for how you would get that much water beneath the glaciers. That's right. That's the essence of the of the criticism. Isn't that, isn't that a straw man argument though? That's like saying, yeah, it's a hey, there's, there's a yeah, well, it's like saying, hey, there's a there's a giant ball of gas in the sky called the sun. It's like, well, if you can't prove how it was formed, fuck you. Yeah. It's like, That's... no, no, I'm not here to sh show you creation of existence. I'm showing you the evidence of what's what's going on right now. Total logical I mean, it's, It sounds like a, a actual yeah. cognitive fallacy. It sounds yeah. like the, the, a straw a straw man argument. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, and that's how I look at it. And I mean, but but they have a point is that, and I've just shown you two small sections. I mean, we could go up into Ontario, Quebec. We could go over to British Columbia. Like I said, I spent four days with um, Jerome Lessman, Professor Jero Jerome Lessman, who is one of the, I would consider him one of the four world's foremost experts on drumlins. He's, he's uh, with uh, Vancouver Island University. I spent four days in the field with him a couple of years ago studying the drumlin fields of British Columbia. And the reason we went up there was because I believe that there was a connection between that drumlin swarm up on the Nechaco Plateau of central British Columbia and the source of the water that created the channel scab lands. And interestingly, he, he agreed with me. I mean, and he had already independently kind of come to that conclusion. And so you have the Canadian geologists who are looking and saying, I think we believe that the source of these floods is actually up here in Canada and then you have the American geologists who are clinging to the idea that, no, 
The Channel Scab Lens was created by this giant proglacial lake in western Montana that was over 600 cubic miles of water. Now, think about this. If you went outside and you were trying to visualize one, an ice cube that's one cubic mile, a mile high and a mile wide and a mile deep, well, that's a, and then if you were to suddenly melt that, that would be a pretty traumatic flood right there, right? Well, so here's Glacial Lake Missoula. I say Lake Missoula with over 600 cubic miles, but nobody is saying, well, where did all of that fucking water come from? <laughs> right. You see, all they're doing is kicking the can upstream, so to speak. <laughs> <laughs> that water had to come from somewhere. And I'm telling you, it came out of Canada. It came from catastrophically melting ice up over the uh, Canadian Rockies. Now, that, do, you, do you believe the, um, the, the radial uh, phenomena points to the impact points of the, of the celestial bodies coming down? Well, this and, is what I was, yes, this is what I was trying to show you there with the, um, with the, uh, the western New York drumlin field. You okay, have, so you there's have, an impact point there. There's an impact point over in Wisconsin. Well, in Wisconsin, I think that the impact point there was actually up in, in Canada. Okay. And, and, um, and a lot of that water scoured out what is now the basin of Lake Superior. Other, another channel of that meltwater scoured out what is now the basin of Lake Michigan. Okay. And you had, you had catastrophic floods emanating from, from both of those ice lobes. Okay. Um, so, uh, sorry, I'm really hung up on the counter argument here. You know, I, I've seen gunshot wounds. Not once did I have to prove that it came from a gun. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, what's... Like, it's like, oh, no, that's not a gunshot wound unless you show me the gun, the person who shot it. It's like, no, 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 we're going to deal with the issue. We're going to look at this, the evidence here, and we're going to move forward. You I don't, under, I don't you understand. You cut yourself with your knife again. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't understand the argument. It's, it's not intelligent. I agree. I agree. And, and once you've, you've looked at this stuff for a long time, you know, and, and you, know, you go through all the, the alternative ideas, and one by one, when you really critically examine them, they, they basically – fall apart. And what you're left with is we've got to look at something extraordinary here. That's the only way we can explain this. And the evidence now is, is you know, again, part of the problem is nobody really looked for it uh, mm -hmm. up until, you know, the last decade or two. And once they started looking for it, then they begin to discover, yeah, my gosh, look, here's this black matte layer. And below that, we find abundant megafauna. And above it, we find almost no megafauna. Below it, we find the Clovis people. Above it, no Clovis people. They've disappeared, right? And, and nobody had really taken a good look at that because maybe we just didn't have the, the, the resolution to, to discern what's going mm. on. But once they begin to take a look at it, that's when they begin to discover the fingerprints of, of a cosmic event. And which goes totally against the grain of the gradualist dogmas that now still are entrenched in academia, academic models of Earth history.